All right, so this one's a bit of a technical question, mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to read it to make sure I get it 100%. No problem. What is the difference between OEM approved lubricants and then lubricants that meet or exceed the manufacturer's specifications? Yeah, it's a very topical subject at the moment. Mm. And it's a question that I actually get uh, asked quite a lot by workshops and workshop owners and mechanics alike, uh, because I think there's a little bit of confusion in the marketplace. Uh, the bottom line is that an OEM approval is a product that has been approved by the OEM themselves for use in their vehicle. Would that be after they've done all the testing and, yes. and development of that vehicle under all the conditions that they've put it through? Correct, correct. Right. So we work in collaboration with them to develop an oil, which is then tested for compliance against those standards, okay? So the value of an OEM approval mm -hmm. is that it's a written proof that the product is actually suitable for use. And it's also proof of the um, lubricant's quality. Okay. Right. Now that only happens when an oil company works in collaboration with an OEM to develop an oil, which is then um, tested for compliance. But you can appreciate that that compliance process and that evaluation process takes considerable time. Yeah. Yeah. And also considerable um, R and D funding. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it would also potentially be expensive because some of these products and some of these brands are global yeah so you're testing around the world so getting samples back from the the pre-production vehicle from you know spain or africa Correct. or australia and then Correct. analyzing it it's a lengthy process it is a lengthy process and it's also a very expensive process and we at castrol we pride ourselves on our r d facilities we have teams of experts working with oems mm. around the world uh, constantly uh, developing new products so this is really the value of a product that actually has an OEM approval. I'm getting your passion here because you were on the bench yeah, as a scientist. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. you would have got, you know, samples back. So I'm, I'm feeling that coming from you that Correct. there's a lot that goes into this. It is. It's a very lengthy process. It's not just blending a cocktail and no, then handing no, no, it out. No, no, no. Correct. And, and, and some people may have that perception as far as how lubricants are actually developed and formulated, but a lot of work goes into it before you actually have a finished product, well before it actually gets submitted for approval. Well, with the OEM, getting that approval and getting that certification from them, obviously when it leaves the dealership and it goes into the big wide world, there's then what we call meet and exceed manufacturer expect expectations. Talk, talk me through that side of things. Yeah, so if you compare an OEM approved product to a product that meets or exceeds, what that really means is that the oil company uh, represents that the lubricant will actually pass OEM specifications, mm -hmm. but they haven't actually formally submitted a sample ah, for right. evaluation right. and testing. So in other words, you're taking the oil company's word for it that it actually, that that product actually, you know, is suitable for does use. Does what it does. Yeah, indeed. So I'm already seeing in my mind, warranty, 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 Correct. warranty, warranty. Is that really one of the main fundamental reasons? I mean, the running, the running is obviously important, but is warranty and warranty claims? Warranty and warranty claims is first and foremost when it comes yeah. to using the correct product and actually using a product that's actually meeting an OEM approval, okay? Many OEMs now are becoming stricter when it comes to lubricants that they actually allow to be used mm -hmm. in their vehicles. Mm -hmm. And conversely, they're not, uh, they're getting even more stricter when it comes to what they're not allowing to be used in their cars as well. It's interesting as a side comment, um, there's been quite a bit of conversation in the industry about fuels yeah, and um, synthetic fuels. And the fact that some manufacturers may look to limit warranty based on the fuel you're going to use in the future. And it sounds like this with oil as well, because you must get it right. Absolutely, you have to get it right. The thing that I always drum into workshops and, and mechanics alike is that selecting the right lubricant for the right vehicle is critical. If you get that right, then you're ensuring that uh, you've got a smooth and trouble-free servicing down the line. And, the, and, and the, the client needs to know that you have chosen the right product. Correct. And you're giving them the service, that's why they're gonna come back and for a workshop, that's how someone comes back. Absolutely.